there are different congregate settings where uh, people spend a lot of time and so we need to concentrate on those areas also to see whether our respiratory infections are really getting transmitted there. So it is just not uh, important that we talk about hospitals and hospital settings and wards but we also need to talk about the other aspects of uh, the areas where people spend more time. I am Dr. Satish Kapiliyavar. I am a public health specialist and I have been uh, working in this field for almost 35 to 36 years now and uh, I have worked in the government sector, I have worked in the NGO sector, I have worked in the development sector with the funding agencies. So it's a, it's a long journey and I have gone through all the public health projects right from the level of primary health center to the directorate level. So I, I bring in the experience from all the levels and I have my passion is to work for the community and for the betterment of community and my interest is to keep a happy face in the community and to reduce mortality and improve quality of life of the people. Uh, in, in During COVID times we have seen people, people around us were dying, our near ones, our relatives, our close friends, our healthcare workers have really expired uh, within a short period of time. But tuberculosis is a slow killer. The, the volume of TB deaths is more really happening, 35% of the global TB deaths happen in India. Now you can imagine if, if you translate that into, in, into numbers, it is, it is huge numbers. So it's a slow death, but it is preventable. And uh, as, as I said, there are three concepts to it. One is you, you need to prevent them, you need to detect and you need to treat. So if you are following these three mechanisms, then we can really bring down the TB. So prevention. I told about three aspects of prevention, put your mechanisms in place for, for prevention and once if he is infected, then see that he is detected properly. There are a lot of good battery of examinations and tests which are available. We can, we can detect and then treatment also is, is with good powerful drugs. So all these three put in place, we can really prevent this. It is not gaining the attention of the general public or the administration because it is not a sudden death. It, it, it cripples the person, it will take a long time for TB to kill a person. And so before it kills, it will damage the entire lung, it will damage the body, it will damage the immune, immunity and then it is a slow death. So slow deaths are recorded not getting attention as we got the attention in COVID. So there is a difference between that COVID and the tuberculosis death. But the volume of deaths is more here and we need to really uh, think about this and prevent uh, the TB deaths. TB infection control is, is very important in, in all this and uh, I would like to quote a few numbers here uh, to understand, to, under, to make my audience understand as to what the magnitude of the problem is there today we, India is facing. So according to the published global 2022 report, uh, we account, that is India account for 28% uh, of TB global burden and around 35% of global TB deaths occur in India. So it's a huge magnitude of the problem because we have huge numbers at the same time, huge problem uh, existing within India. So we, we roughly estimate around 30 lakh active tuberculosis cases uh, within the community and uh, we, we don't tend to really diagnose all the cases there. Around 24 uh, lakhs we have diagnosed last year. So the magnitude of the problem is really, really great. And from the infection control perspective, if you see, uh, each, each person would have around four to five households. So you can understand what level of, what level of uh, transmission can happen within the communities and the spread is really happening. So it is very difficult when the spread is happening to control the tuberculosis efforts. But India has come up with a lot of good efforts and it has got a good strategy of uh, doing this. So there are three pillars in, uh, in India's strategy. One is detect, second is treat, and then the prevention pillar, I would say, is the most important pillar today we are uh, facing problem for. So because pockets of prevention are happening within our communities around us, 
in the crowds and all. So, we need to really do something for the prevention to really bring down the tuberculosis curve. So, TB is a topic which is very dear to me. So, the TB program as you all know, uh, we formally started it in 1962, the year I was born. So, that was called uh, NTP, National TB program and National TB program concentrated all its efforts at the level of district and uh, through the primary health centers. So, but we were really not able to reach all the primary health centers from the level of district. So, district had one administrative unit. And then in, in early, early 2000, we then started a revised national TB control program where we decentralized it to a taluka level. So, a uh, taluka level health center became the focus of uh, uh, TB prevention where we concentrated on two aspects there, diagnosing a case and then treating them properly. So, this was a good breaking step uh, for the RNTCP and a lot of efforts have gone into really bring in new diagnostic technologies new treatment technologies, new drugs and new ways, new processes of really handling uh, the tuberculosis load in the country. So, we have come a long way. Uh, there is a lot of private participation now you see, there is a lot of NGO participation we see and there is a lot of corporates who are really um, bringing in a lot of good money uh, to work for tuberculosis and there are, there are the, the technology also is being really roped in into, into the system where uh, we are able to really multiply our efforts and we are working smart in tuberculosis area. So, prevention is, is very, very important and India has been putting a lot of efforts in prevention. So, there are three aspects in prevention. One, one when we are born at the childhood level, when we are infants, we are given an immunization, BCG immunization. So, at birth we give an immunization. So, the, the greatest advantage of BCG immunization was the serious forms of TB we are not, not, not seeing uh, today. So, it prevents the serious forms of TB. And off late, we have also started BCG vaccination for adults. So, there is, there is a, a big program going on for adults where uh, BCG vaccination above the age of 60 who are comorbid, we are, we are actually giving them. So, vaccine plays an important role. And the second aspect is infection prevention and control. Infection prevention and control is a hallmark of the program where uh, you are preventing the source. So, the source of infection is the patient himself. So, if a person has got pulmonary TB, TB in the lungs, so that will really transmit it through his cough, through his sneeze, through loud talk and the person is within the community, the person is just around us and we never know who is, who has got tuberculosis and who does not. So, in the crowded places when we, when we cough, sneeze or speak loudly, this tuberculosis bacilli in the form of small droplets, droplet nuclei they spread across within the environment and the person who is there within the environment, if he is inhaling this bacilli, they are likely to get this infection. So, prevention component is very, very important. So, there are different strategies at prevention level to do this. Uh, before I go into the prevention aspects, I would also like to mention that we have got, uh, government has taken a lot of good efforts uh, to understand the disease and the infection. So, there are two things, disease is something different and infection, tuberculosis infection is something different. So, for a, for a tuberculosis uh, person, disease will ex exhibit all the symptoms, disease will be able to get transmitted, uh, but unlike in the infection, the infection remains dormant, the patient can be, norm the person can be normal, he can be like among us and whenever his immunity comes down, the reactivation of his tuberculosis bacilli happens and he turns into a disease. Now, we have got an advantage of really having a diagnostic test for this and also having treatment, short course treatment for even doing the infection uh, courses to get this infection down. So, what we do is we try to identify within the community. Now, if a person is there in the household who has got tuberculosis, uh, there are other people living in the in the household who are at risk and if the person is not controlling himself properly like with a mask or cough hygiene is not really implemented, then he is likely to transmit to the uh, fellow co people who are living along with them. So, we now try to do a test to all these household contacts and if the test is positive, it indicates that there is TB infection but TB disease is not there. So, at this early stage of TB infection, which, which we also call latent TB, so we do not call it latent TB now, we call it infection now. So, if it is an infective stage, then we can still uh, give a three weeks course, short course 
every week we can give a drug and for 12 weeks if we can do this then the chances of this person converting into tuberculosis disease is, is really coming down. 10 to 15 percent of these people will not come down and uh, most protection is seen in the first 3-4 years of uh, taking this treatment. So, government is concentrating a lot of efforts to really uh, put this mechanism in place and there are many NGOs and many corporates who are really coming forward to take this forward. And there are two, two important tests which have come in, IGRA and also CITB. CITB is a skin test which is done. So, these two tests will really identify this and there are newer drugs which have come, rifapentine and INH which are used for uh, this phase of. Uh. So, having, having said this, the important component I would really want to revisit was infection prevention and control. And infection prevention and control is what uh, we all can actually contribute into as, as a general community we can contribute into and we have gone through a process of this like the COVID was not very, uh, we, we, we just came out of the COVID, we survived COVID and uh, there was a lot of mechanism which was put in place during COVID and all those mechanisms that were put in place would hold good for tuberculosis also and for other respiratory infections. So, cough hygiene is a very important component like coughing openly is really a clearly no no so if you are having symptoms then you should uh, use a surgical mask and you should avoid going into general public and we should be very, very vigilant about the people coughing around because we have to protect ourselves also from that cough and so in the crowded environment going entering into a crowded environment it is really uh, going to be uh, uh, not so good and it will it, it's a fertile environment for tb transmission so similarly in the communities, similarly uh, crowded places like malls, like transport areas, like uh, um, um, busy shops. So everywhere where the crowded areas are there, we will have to be really very careful here. And cough hygiene is one thing which we should really uh, concentrate on to, uh, to prevent this. The second is where we live, uh, even in our households. So households I can categorize into uh, a posh locality, a posh household a uh, mediocre uh, in the urban areas, in the uh, housing colonies and all. And then there is there is a, a lot of population living in the slums also. And the the slums have got lot of concentrated area in a very small compact room without any ventilation because they can't afford to have ventilation there because if you, if you keep a window, the op window will open into the next house. So they have disadvantages of really having it into a small area. So their only cough hygiene, the practices, the good habits, disposal of sputum, this, only these things really, really will work. And most of the time if the patient is kept outside in the community, in the, in the, in the light, in the sunlight, in the environment, that would be really good. And if at all, if you have a patient, you can keep the patient near the window. Uh, you can set up his bed near the window and give a directional airflow so that the air from the patient goes out of the window. So that these are some of the simple things which we can do uh, for a slum area. And coming now to the uh, urban localities where the housing board colonies or simple colonies, 2 BHK, 3 BHK apartments. So here also we need to see that our windows and doors are really open. There is free flow of fresh air, cross ventilation happening. And so, uh, in the build structure also, we should really inculcate this uh, uh, practices with the architects to see that uh, uh, most of our houses are well ventilated, uh, well lit and uh, uh, good fresh free flow of air is a must in each household. So, that, that itself will prevent because the TB bacilli which is moving around is, will be flushed out if, if we get good ventilation. And then the luxury of the big houses, they, they can really have a consultancy and then uh, they can build their houses in such a way that they, they really get good ventilation and good light. So, good ventilation, good light is very, very important uh, in TB transmission. So, we will have to really uh, work out on that. The three important elements of uh, infection control are administrative controls, environmental controls and personal protective equipment. So, what do I mean by administrative controls? Administrative controls are very simple uh, ways of really handling the infection control. Like if one has got an experience of going to a hospital in the morning hours, you would see a long big crowd all waiting in the waiting area, a huge crowd would be there. So, everyone peeping through a small window to get their registrations done. So, that will be the scene with around 200-300 patients who are all 
uh, all types of patients would be there some patients coughing some patient coming for different uh, diagno for diagnosis and different uh, disease ailments so that would be the scenario where uh, you will see all our hospitals today all our hospitals and institutions and many a places there is poor lighting there uh, poor visibility there and you are there is no place even to walk for the patients here and there so everyone rubbing their shoulders that is the kind of scene we see early early morning in the uh, in the opds so when i mean to say administrative uh, controls uh, all what can really prevent this crowding within that waiting area constitutes the administrative controls like simple queuing of these patients giving them scheduling them their numbers giving them appointments and calling them in different schedules itself will really bring down this overcrowding within that waiting area and also the the different uh, opds should be planned in such a way that the crowding doesn't happen the criss crossing doesn't happen within those waiting areas so the person the, the little babies who have come from for immunization would directly go to the immunization place the women pregnant women who have come for uh, getting their antenatal checkups or those should go to that those respective places and there should be no criss crossing with the infectious patients so that is very important in the building so when we construct this uh, health facilities this simple things are taken care of and scheduling plays a, a good role i mean you know, in some of the places they have even addressed the timings also the babies can come early in the morning the women can come a little late uh, after undergoing their early morning course like 11 o'clock 12 o'clock they can be scheduled there and the working people can be scheduled in the evening so different flexi timings for the opds can be really put so that the crowd can really come down so these are some of the ways there is some triaging also and if uh, if someone finds a patient coughing he could really get uh, a preferential treatment and preferential attention to the to the window where he is, is supposed to go so he can jump the queue and go to the to the place so he spends less and less time within the crowded environment so this is what i mean by administrative controls and one of the best administrative control is diagnosing a patient putting him on treatment the moment you start tb treatment the patient gets non infective so that also comes under administrative control so it it is the intention of each healthcare worker to identify a person early and then diagnose and put them on treatment so it's a best uh, way of preventing tb so the the source of infection is not infective to others so that is one of the things then as i said scheduling triaging then uh, putting the administrative controls in place are all uh, that comes under this and one important aspect is anyone who who is seen coughing needs to be given a surgical mask within the within the opd itself even the surgical mask some of the hospitals they keep with the uh, with the security guard and if the security guard finds someone coughing he immediately gives a mask so that the infective material which the patient is going to cough is getting entrapped into the surgical mask so that is very important uh, the administrative controls this all this constitutes in the administrative controls now i would like to come to the environmental controls now imagine a situation as i told that 200 300 people waiting in a waiting area and it is poorly ventilated uh, windows are present there but the windows are covered with posters windows are covered with jallies or there is some almara which comes uh, uh, before the window so the cross ventilation is really hampered there so one needs to really look at and utilize fully utilize the ventilation aspect of the waiting areas and how do we really decongest this waiting areas so all efforts to decongest the waiting areas is very important uh, in 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 environmental environmental aspects and so when we look at environmental aspects the the uh, the cough which the person is actually uh, uh, having there within that uh, within that small waiting area creates a lot of aerosols which are which are suspended within that uh, within that area and so uh we need to re really dilute this we need to remove this uh, all this infected particles how do we re how do we remove that so all all these aspects comes under the environmental control so a person has done a cough and there is a lot of uh, cloud which has been there and the tb bacilli are all suspended there so there are different ways of actually handling this one is to open all those windows so that the fresh air comes in and flushes out all this so there is this is this mechanism is called dilution so this can be naturally happening this can be also mechanically happening like if you if you have 
directional air flows if you have uh, exhaust fans exhaust fans also have to be very meticulously and professionally applied there uh, exhaust fan can be also counterproductive if you are just putting the exhaust fan above the above the door and near the window because the air will get circulated there so it has to be a, a purely professional uh, component a professionalist is a right person to really put an exhaust fan at an appropriate place so mechanical ventilation can happen it can pull out air or it can push out air and uh, in the directional air flow and there are there are many other aspects like the central ac is the uh, the other hepa filters and all are there so this all this constitutes the environmental controls and it should be handled by a um, by a professional in a in an hospital environment so they are they are more costly me mechanisms but i would i would still say that uh, opening the windows and doors open and keeping the environmental uh, uh, ventilation properly that is the best solution for uh, the environmental controls now uh, all these three aspects administrative environmental and ppe are have got a hierarchy hierarchy of controls like the first thing to come in place is administrative controls the second is environmental and the third is ppe and unless we have administrative controls in place unless we have got environmental controls in place the personal protective equipment the equipment which you see the healthcare workers wearing like the respiratory respiratory uh, respirators which are different than the surgical masks so the respirators have to be used by the uh, healthcare workers which will prevent the the aerosols from coming into the body so when i put a respirator i will not be able to suck in this air and it filters it out from the outer layer so that is called a respirator so a respirator will only work if there is some clean environment around and if there is a slight iota of doubt that there are certain which are remaining that also would not come out come come in so personal protective equipment has to be really used when the two other mechanisms are in place so all in three they complement each other so personal protective equipment as such alone will not really work it will it will it will still have its dangers of getting infected so healthcare workers should be really very very careful they are a rich resource for uh, for our hospitals and if we are losing our resource during covid time we have seen a lot of our resources have died succumb to covid in spite of really taking up all these aspects so uh, that is the reason why i say that administrative controls and environmental controls have to be in place and then the ppe will be complementing this so healthcare workers definitely should use personal protective equipment and all the high risk people who are coming to the healthcare workers are likely to transmit the healthcare workers so uh, personal protective equipment like wearing the mask or wearing the surgical mask uh, for the patients and uh, respirators for the healthcare workers then appropriate goggles appropriate uh, gear depending upon at which location they are working they might be look they may be working in a uh, bronchoscopy suite which is a very uh, dangerous area where the transmission is highly possible the dentist uh, the the art centers the laboratories these are high risk areas where we need more ventilation we need really a lot of precautions to be taking care of the nurses who are working in the ward who are very working with the patients with close proximity your icus and all these are places where uh, we really need to put our efforts in place so ppes are are protective for healthcare workers and they should be really used every healthcare worker should be really concentrating on uh, personal protective equipment yeah so uh, we have spoken about hospital and institutions now there is another aspect to it which uh, which the country really needs to focus on uh, the other aspect is uh, where do a person spend a lot of his time his work time work spaces there are small factories there are some other places where people spend more time so in we spoke about institutions and the safety of institutions we also need to see whether our other places where people spend lot of time are safe or not like i would give an example of a of a big shop where people are really coming to a counter and there's a lot of rush there like you can take an example of a mall where lot of people really gather there uh, uh, they come there for window shopping and all they they just loiter around and uh, spend a lot of time now schools is another 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 area if if there is one infected person within a school uh, children spend around 6 to 7 hours in school and you can imagine what can happen in the in those areas 
So uh, similarly prisons, if one of the prison inmate is again uh, has, has got symptoms, so it, he can he is likely to transmit to other places. So there are different congregate settings where uh, people spend a lot of time and so we need to concentrate on those areas also to see whether our respiratory infections are really getting transmitted there. So it is just not uh, important that we talk about hospitals and hospital settings and wards, but we also need to talk about the other aspects of uh, the areas where people spend more time. And again, the same principles apply here. The crowding has to be avoided and if there is a symptomatic person, we need to really protect him from with a surgical mask. Uh, so we should see people who are coughing with surgical mask there and then uh, there has to be some advice to these people that they need to go and get tested and treated. That is the best policy as I said. So in workplaces also if, if colleagues find someone coughing then those people should be advised to really go and get tested. Testing is free, treatment is free, so everyone can really avail this. Government has put a lot of mechanisms in this. So it is all the way important that all the family members who are staying in a house, they spend a lot of time, more than 12 hours, 14 hours within house households. And if there are people uh, living with symptoms in those households, you can imagine the transmission that can happen in households. So all these aspects which I talked about, the environment con controls, the administrative controls, the PPEs, all this again to some extent are relevant to these areas also. So we need to uh, see how we can prepare ourselves, prepare our households or prepare our buildings uh, from, from, from this aspect. Now colleges, you take colleges, high schools or uh, sports areas, small little rooms where people concentrate, uh, closed uh, transport mechanisms like the metros and all. So these are some of the areas again we will have to really think about. And if you are taking a transport, if it is an open transport, like an auto is the best way of tra traveling. Uh, though, though there is pollution, but at least there is a free flow of air within that. And so when you travel in a car also, if someone is symptomatic, it is always better to open the car window so that fresh air comes in and the stale air really goes out. So these are some of the things which, which we have to be conscious about and applying the three principles of infection control everywhere where we, where we think that there would be crowding and there would be uh, stagnation of uh, free flow of air. You know, coming to uh, a situation where a household has got a uh, person who has got uh, is suffering from TB and he has got symptoms, he is at the symptom stage. So how do we really uh, take precautions that the other family members really don't get uh, infected? So as I said earlier, the surgical mask really helps in preventing the spread of uh, all these bacilli within the house like the, the microbes which are really coming out of the nose and mouth while we cough that gets entrapped within this uh, surgical mask. So surgical mask should be given to a person to be worn all the time. And if he wants to cough, there has to be a covered spittoon. In the spittoon, the spittoon should be having some disinfected material and the cough can actually go into the spittoon and the spittoon can then close and it could be kept there. So these are two important precautions that the person who is affected with TB should be, be really following within the household. And all the households, should be cooperating with this person because the person is ill and everyone has to really take care of. And as I said, if you are allocating a space near the window and giving a directional airflow uh, towards uh, the air which can move outside would really greatly help to prevent this aerosols from uh, spreading within the, within the house. And there are certain precautions the other household members also should be taking. They should be first providing this environment for the person who is living there, a, an enabling environment for him to participate in all this cough hygiene, uh, surgical mask, the spittoon, cleaning the spittoon, disposing it off properly into a, uh, uh, into a drain and all. So these are very important things which the household should support them. At the same time, the households, if there is any symptoms which the household should get, then they should be really going to uh, a health center and get tested uh, for tuberculosis. Like there are two types of tests, sputum is taken and also the x-rays are taken. So there are different battery of uh, tests which they apply and everything is free in the government institutions. So you don't have to really spend. 
we reach out to a government institution they will receive you well they will get uh, your your sputum tested and a right advice you would get and as i said earlier there are two conditions here one is infection and one is a disease and when i say disease disease is coming up with all the symptoms and a person is ill whereas in infection the households are healthy they don't have symptoms they don't uh, go into a stage of transmission at so if if you are able to identify them early in the household and treat them early identification with two tests which i said igra test and the cytb test and then if they come positive then there is a short course uh, treatment which we now offer them so that will prevent them from really going into an active stage so this is what the household should be doing and at the same time again uh, create a, a very good environment within the household like fresh air coming in air exchanges should really happen within the household also and natural light should be there air exchanges keeping all the windows and doors open uh, uh, till the time the person is really so so these are some of the ways of preventing the tuberculosis spread within the community and one aspect i would like to tell about the children so usually the the ill patients the children really go near the ill patients and most of the time the ill patients if he's a granny or a grandpa uh, the the children are likely to go there so we will have to really uh, alert uh, and the the elderly people within the family also and then the children also that um, they need to say take some precautions of really going very near uh, to them so but again as i said once you start treatment people will get non infective so supporting them in the treatment reminding them that the drugs have to be taken so if they follow a, a continuous course of one week to 10 days they become non infective so they will they will only transmit the dead bacilli and dead bacilli we are not going to transmit infection so all the bacilli within the body are killed within the first week so taking treatment meticulously reminding them to take treatment these are some of the ways which households can really help each other to really contain the disease within there the the biggest worry i have is uh, we have not at got to the level of really uh, stopping the transmission transmission as i said is happening everywhere around us in the institutions in the workplaces in the transports in which we we take if you if you really track all the pathways which you are going to traverse the whole day everywhere you will see transmission happening and so what does the system need to do now the system need to to really map out all these transmission zones like if it is a school that's a zone if there are symptomatics within the school then we need to really uh, concentrate there so similarly every place has to be seen with suspicion and uh, wherever transmission is happening we need to really put our mechanisms in place to prevent that transmission so we have spoken about transmission how do we prevent transmission the surgical mask is there the environmental controls are there good ventilation has to be provided so if these things are really consciously put into our practice that is really going to help us so the the biggest worry is transmission is still happening and all the people who are symptomatics are not put on treatment so we need to really identify early identification of all the symptomatics getting them to system getting them through a battery of investigations diagnosing them properly and giving the, them the proper treatment is itself going to be a great leap um, into prevention because as i said tb bacilli will really get killed within the first one week to 10 days and even if the symptoms persist the symptoms along with the symptoms only the dead bacilli will transmit so dead bacilli are not uh, going to transmit infection so people have to be initiated on treatment first so that steps need to be really in place we are doing a lot but still we are missing a lot of cases tb now has been made notifiable so every person who is handling tb every practitioner every lab every pharmacy whoever is coming in contact with tuberculosis patient they need to register them there is a portal where everyone has to notify a tb disease so this is a very good step which government has taken and there were a lot of counter sales of drugs within the pharmacies and all so now that is curbed so no tb drug is sold within the within the general market uh, all the tb drugs are got through the system so everyone has to channel themselves through the system to get this drug so the the problem of drug resistance and all this is really getting addressed here so the greatest worries again as i said chain of transmission has to be stopped people need to be put on treatment then again there is behavior change also need to really happen we have seen a lot of behavior change within the covid time 
but people think it was only for covid and covid is gone now we are okay to but there are many other respiratory infections which are equally dangerous we need to really prevent so the same uh, practices which we followed during the covid time like the social distancing uh, uh, the, the 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 physical 2 meters or uh, that much of distance which we uh, recommended uh using of mask and all that that still needs to really uh, continue so chain of transmission breaking transmission is 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 the biggest problem and we need to really do that and the treatment mechanisms which are available for the condition of tb infection within a body that also needs to be really taken care of and there is a lot of research going on for developing a tb vaccine so in the near future uh, in 5 6 years we, we will also get a good new vaccine which can further prevent uh, tuberculosis so all what we, what we can do for preventing tb is really going to help us to bring down the tuberculosis curve bring down the transmission curve and this is all really required to eliminate tb from india yeah the the message i want to really uh, give here is everyone of us has got a role to play and there are powerful mechanisms where we can really uh, put in place like uh, Uh, children school this is a very important area where if children are made aware about all this there is a good child to child activity which can happen children speak amongst themselves children even take the messages from uh, from the school to the to the households and parents ask them what did your teacher tell today so these are the kind of messages the teachers should be really giving to the children and the children can then transmit these messages to the to their household so mm-hmm. there is a child to child activity and the child to home activity similarly colleges you can discuss these things in colleges and all and the print media the media uh, everyone had got a, a good role role to play during the covid time uh, imagine that situation and we we really need to put all those mechanisms in place with the same intensity to really uh, get this problem down i would i would advise everyone to be safe like remain safe when i say remain safe be vigilant is anyone symptomatic around you so your role is twofold here one is to protect yourself and also to see that the person gets a proper attention at the health center like the person can go and get tested and treated at the health center which is free again so be safe be in a safe environment go in a place which is which is very nice nice in the sense uh, the the good ventilation is there good light is there go into areas don't go don't venture out into the crowded places so try to be safe so being safe is 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 the best for everyone and help others who are symptomatic these are the two messages which really i want to uh, give and children are a powerful media concentrate on the children we can really uh, make a positive change if schools children colleges these are all involved within these efforts thank you so much and uh, i i i I, uh, i expect that this message really cuts across to different communities and we really contribute to tuberculosis prevention in the country thank you so much